Hello, and welcome to St. Mary's Now, a partnership between the Enterprise newspaper and the Forest Center TV video production program. I'm John Tillery. And I'm Louis Bose. And here's the latest news we have from the Enterprise. On Tuesday, the St. Mary's County Commissioners voted 4 to 1 to raise the income taxes from 3%, 3.2%, and property taxes from 84.78 cents per $100 of assessed value to 90.78 sense in their working budget. Commissioner John O'Connor, who voted against the increase, said that in an interview, there are other options that could have been taken that wouldn't have placed the burden on the citizens of the county. We went with the easier route. During the afternoon sessions, the commissioners voted four to one to approve the county's draft budget of 259 million, almost 30 million more than the current year, with O'Connor voting against. The county is shifting its focus of priority from the bridge to addressing the bottleneck at the intersection of Route 5 and Great Mills Road during the peak times. Public work officials are expanding the whole scope of what we're trying to do with state transportation projects. With the focus on Great Mills intersection, improving the intersection in Great Mills is estimated to cost $48 million and would span the length of Route 5 between Great Mills and Piney Point Road. According to the letter addressed to Pete Rand, the state's transportation secretary, the letter requested that if the entire bridge cannot be funded, please consider. Advancing improvements at the intersection of routes 235 and 4 ahead of replacement. During a joint meeting between state transportation officials and county lawmakers in November, a member of the state department said there was no reason that route 235 intersection improvements couldn't move forward before the bridge replacement. On January 18th at CSM's winter commencement, the College of Southern Maryland honored criminal justice instructor John DeLaborer of Leonardtown with the college's 2018-2019 Adjunct Faculty Excellence Award. DeLaborer said in a press release, I was a little shocked, but it's nice to get a pat on the back. DeLaborer has been teaching at CSM for close to 11 years and also a public safety officer on the college's Leonardtown campus. He exclaims, I love it. Students see me putting into practice what I teach in the classrooms. William Maroney, curriculum coordinator for the laborer's department, said he is a highly decorated police officer with an enviable record of accomplishment and courage. He also created and serves as the advisor for the CSM's Criminal Justice Club at the college's Leonardtown campus. The club gives students the opportunity to help their community and explore the criminal justice field. The idea to create the club came after the shooting at Great Mills High School in March 2018. The laborer was asked his students to create the projects that could potentially lessen the chance of school shootings in the community. You might see St. Mary's County Parks become tobacco-free as early as September. Last June, the commissioners approved establishing tobacco-free goals after county employee surveys showed increased interest in the transitioning towards a tobacco-free environment. Currently, tobacco use inside and within 20 feet of county buildings is prohibited. In county parks, smoking is prohibited within 150 feet of athletic fields in the Spray and Skate Park at Nicolette Park. The St. Mary's County Health Department, human resources staff are looking to update and expand their prohibition to include vaping and other use of tobacco or nicotine products at all county properties. Community members gathered at St. Clement's Island Museum to celebrate Maryland Day on Monday. A ceremony organized by the St. Mary's Recreational and Parks Department took place on the mainland across from the island in remembrance of that day in 1634. Reverend Ron Murphy of the Jesuit community at Georgetown University spoke of the arrival of the English and an iron cross that came with them. The vertical text read, this cross is said to have been brought by the first settlers from England to St. Mary's. Murphy said the cross was later used to stand over the first schools run by Catholic churches in America. Francis Gray, Piscataway Canoy, tribal chair, followed after Murphy's presentation with a brief history of Native American interactions with the colonists. Gray said that Piscataway Canoy's tribe did not wish to establish a colony or government like the settlers, instead their goal was to trade fur. Proclamations were also presented by Gretchen Hardman, a representative of Governor Larry Hogan, as well as by Senator Jack Bailey. After the program, people traveled to the island by water taxi for celebration of a Catholic Mass. In the final minutes of Topticon Braves game against the visiting McDonough Rams, it seemed like the rain couldn't even dampen the intensity of both teams. 
The Rams tried time and time again to score past Topicon Goldie, Daryl Black, but couldn't get anything in the net as Black cleared the ball time and time again to the offensive who ran the clock for a 5-3 win. Jared Switzer, who plays crease attack for the Braves, said, It went good. I could have had a couple more goals, but you know I'm new to the game. I'm happy with the goals. It was awesome. This news brief has been provided by The Enterprise. For more details, visit SOMDnews.com. That's all we have for you on this edition of St. Mary's Now. I'm Louis Bowes. And I'm Gianna Tillery. Signing, Signing off. off.